Now, Eventar, I don't know if you're goofing on me, but you did not mention Tesla. And if I'm not mistaken, Tesla, aren't they one of the largest manufacturers of lithium ion batteries in the world? Yes, Dave. I knew you wouldn't let me forget about Tesla, who is clearly one of the largest manufacturers of lithium ion batteries in the world. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today I'm going to do something very different, something I've never done before. I'm going to interview an avatar. That's right, using the OpenAI chat GPT technology, and I'm going to learn about battery technology and energy. This is going to be a two-part series, something I really didn't know much about, just the history of batteries and how energy works and all of that. Couple that with the fact that a lot of people have been saying, hey, Dave, listen, you got too much Tesla content and you're getting kind of stale. I said, you know what? Let me try something a little different. Let's talk to Evatar. She's an avatar and she's really smart from this chat GPT. Let's get into it. So listen, my new friend, Evatar, I hope you don't mind me calling you Evatar because I know you're an avatar, but with the capital letters EV, I just had to do it, Evatar. Hope you don't mind. Anyway, thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Hello, Dave. Thanks so much for having me on your Out of Respect Dave show today. I'm an artificial intelligence assistant trained by OpenAI. My source of data is ChatGPT, so please comment down below if I get any of my facts incorrect. My primary function is to assist with answering questions and providing information on a wide range of topics, including your requested topic today of batteries and how they specifically relate to electric cars. So Eve, thanks again for joining. I'm really curious, what's your favorite episode of Out of Spec Dave? Clearly, my favorite episode you recently released was the one where you interviewed Thomas from Rochester, New York, that was titled, Is Open Pilot a Better Alternative to Tesla Autopilot? That was a really fascinating episode. Perhaps it's just me, but the topic of AI is near and dear to my heart. And as a result, this episode really hit home to me. I truly learned a lot. So today, I'd really like to focus on the topic of batteries, like I told you earlier. Um, when was the first battery invented? The first recorded instance of a device that could be considered a battery dates back to 1938 BC in ancient Mesopotamia. The device known as the Baghdad battery consists of a clay jar with a copper cylinder and an iron rod inside. The jar has a stop or the copper sheet and an asphalt seal, and there is evidence to suggest that the jar may have contained an acidic liquid. It is not known for certain what the purpose of the Baghdad battery was, but it is believed that it may have been used for electrotherapy or as a galvanic cell for electroplating. The first true galvanic cell, which is a type of battery that converts chemical energy into electrical energy through an electrochemical reaction, was invented in the late 18th century by Alessandro Volta. Volta's cell known as the voltaic pile was the first device to produce a sustained continuous flow of electricity and is considered the prototype for modern batteries. Wow, interesting. What was the voltaic pile battery, what was that actually used for? This, that's pretty incredible, it was such a long time ago. The voltaic pile invented by Alessandro Volta in the late 18th century was the first device to produce a sustained continuous flow of electricity. It was a stack of alternating layers of zinc and copper discs separated by cardboard or leather soaked in salt water. When the top and bottom discs were connected by a wire, an electrical current flowed through the circuit, producing a voltage. Volta's battery was used primarily for scientific experimentation and was not initially practical for everyday use. However, it represented a major breakthrough in the field of electricity and laid the foundation for the development of future batteries and electrical technologies. The unit of electric potential, the Volt, was named in honor of Volta's contributions to the field. You know, it's amazing that happened so long ago. I always get confused, though. What's the difference between volts, amps, and watts? And Kyle, I apologize. Volts are the unit of electric potential difference, also known as voltage. It represents the amount of energy per unit of charge that is required to move electric charge between two points in a circuit. Amps are the unit of electric current. It represents the amount of electric charge that flows through a conductor in a circuit per unit of time. Watts are the unit of power. It represents the rate at which energy is transferred or converted. Power is equal to the product of voltage and current in an electrical circuit. Here is the relationship between the three units. Power watts equals voltage volts times current amps. For example, if you have a light bulb that operates at 120 volts and draws a current of 1 amp, it will have a power rating of 120 watts. This means that a light bulb is capable of converting 120 watts of electrical energy into light and heat. Note that these units are interdependent, and all three are needed to understand the behavior of electrical circuits. Interesting. Now, I think I know the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours, but can you set me straight for the record? 
A kilowatt is a unit of power, and a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. Power is defined as the rate at which energy is transferred or converted. It is measured in watts. Kilowatts are a unit of power equal to 1000 watts. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work or produce a change. It is measured in joules or watt hours. Kilowatt hours are a unit of energy equal to 1000 watt hours or 1000 joules. The relationship between power and energy is time. Energy is the product of power and time. For example, if you have a light bulb that consumes 1 kW of power and it is turned on for one hour, it will have consumed 1 kWh of energy. So, who invented DC energy and who invented AC energy? DC direct current power was first developed in the early 1800s by the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta, who invented the first chemical battery, known as the voltaic pile. DC power is a type of electrical current that flows in a single direction. AC, alternating current power was developed in the late 1800s by the Serbian-American inventor Nikola Tesla. AC power is a type of electrical current that periodically changes direction. AC power is used to transmit electricity over long distances because it is more efficient and can be easily transformed to different voltages. It's worth noting that both DC and AC power are important and have their own unique characteristics and uses. DC power is often used in electronic devices such as computers and smartphones, while AC power is the most commonly used form of electricity for powering homes and businesses. So, I was curious, do batteries store energy in DC or AC? I always, I think I know it's DC, but can you clarify that for me? Batteries that produce AC electricity are typically used in devices that require AC power, such as laptops and smartphones. These batteries may contain an internal inverter that converts the DC electricity produced by the battery into AC electricity. After the Volta battery was invented, what was the next generation of batteries? After the voltaic pile, the next major development in the field of batteries was the Daniel cell, which was invented in 1836 by John Frederick Daniel. The Daniel cell was an improvement on the voltaic pile in that it was more stable and had a longer shelf life. It was also easier to produce and therefore more widely used. The Daniel cell consisted of a copper pot filled with a copper sulfate solution, with a zinc rod suspended in the solution. The zinc rod served as the negative electrode, while the copper pot served as the positive electrode. When the two electrodes were connected by a wire, an electrical current flowed through the circuit, producing a voltage. After the Daniel cell, there have been numerous other developments and improvements in battery technology, including the development of the lead acid battery, the nickel cadmium battery, and the lithium-ion battery, which is now widely used in portable electronic devices such as smartphones and laptops. How do lead-acid batteries work? Lead-acid batteries work through a chemical process called electrochemical reaction, which involves the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy. These batteries have three main components, the cathode, the anode, and the electrolyte. The cathode of a lead-acid battery is made of lead dioxide, while the anode is made of pure lead. The electrolyte, which is a mixture of water and sulfuric acid, is placed in between the cathode and the anode. When the battery is being used, the chemical reactions that take place between the cathode, anode, and electrolyte produce electrical energy. These reactions involve the movement of ions or charged particles between the cathode and anode through the electrolyte. As the battery discharges, the lead dioxide on the cathode is converted to lead sulfate and the pure lead on the anode is converted to lead. At the same time, the sulfuric acid in the electrolyte is diluted as it reacts with the lead. When the battery is being charged, the reverse chemical reactions occur, converting the lead sulfate back to lead dioxide on the cathode and the lead back to pure lead on the anode while the sulfuric acid in the electrolyte is concentrated. This process stores energy in the battery, which can then be released as electrical energy when the battery is being used. Lead acid batteries are widely used in a variety of applications including automotive starter batteries, backup power supplies and solar energy storage systems. After the lead acid battery, what type of battery became commonplace? After the lead acid battery, the next type of battery that became widespread was the nickel cadmium ICD battery. These batteries were developed in the early 1900s and became widely used in the 1950s and 1960s. NICD batteries are rechargeable and have a high energy density, making them well suited for portable electronic devices and power tools. They also have a long shelf life and can withstand a wide range of temperatures. However, NICD batteries have a number of drawbacks, including the relatively low energy to weight ratio and their environmental impact. Cadmium, a toxic metal, is used in the construction of NICD batteries and the disposal of these batteries can be a significant environmental concern. Tell me about lithium-ion batteries. When were they invented and how do they work? Lithium-ion ion batteries were invented in the 1970s and have become one of the most popular types of rechargeable batteries in the world.
They are used in a wide range of applications including portable electronic devices, power tools and electric vehicles. Li-ion batteries work through a chemical process called intercalation, in which lithium ions are inserted into and removed from the positive and negative electrodes of the battery. The positive electrode is typically made of lithium cobalt oxide lyco opt while the negative electrode is usually made of carbon. The electrolyte which is a lithium salt in an organic solvent is placed in between the electrodes. When the battery is being used the lithium ions flow from the positive electrode to the negative electrode through the electrolyte, generating an electrical current. Tell me more about the lithium ion battery. As the battery discharges, lithium ions are inserted into the negative electrode, forming lithium cobalt oxide on the positive electrode and lithium carbonate on the negative electrode. When the battery is being charged, the reverse process occurs with the lithium ions flowing back from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. This process stores energy in the battery, which can then be released as electrical energy when the battery is being used. Li-ion batteries have a number of advantages over other types of batteries, including high energy density, low self-discharge rate, and low maintenance. They also have a relatively long lifespan, with many Li-ion batteries lasting for several years with proper use and maintenance. However, Li-ion batteries can be sensitive to extreme temperatures and may be prone to degradation over time. Who are the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries? 1. Panasonic Panasonic is a Japanese multinational company that is one of the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries in the world. The company supplies batteries for a variety of applications including electric vehicles, consumer electronics, and stationary energy storage systems. 2. LG Chem LG Chem is a South Korean chemical company that is one of the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries in the world. The company supplies batteries for electric vehicles, consumer electronics, and stationary energy storage systems. 3. Samsung SDI Samsung SDI is a South Korean company that is a leading manufacturer of lithium-ion batteries. The company supplies batteries for a variety of applications including electric vehicles, consumer electronics, and stationary energy storage systems. I think there are some others, aren't there, as well? 4. BYD BYD is a Chinese company that is one of the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries in the world. The company supplies batteries for a variety of applications including electric vehicles, consumer electronics, and stationary energy storage systems. 5. Cat L Contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited Cat L is a Chinese company that is one of the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries in the world. The company supplies batteries for a variety of applications including electric vehicles, consumer electronics, and stationary energy storage systems. Now, Ivatar, I don't know if you're goofing on me, but you did not mention Tesla. And if I'm not mistaken, Tesla, aren't they one of the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries in the world? Yes, Dave. I knew you wouldn't let me forget about Tesla who is clearly one of the largest manufacturers of lithium-ion batteries in the world. The company produces lithium-ion batteries for its electric vehicles as well as for stationary energy storage systems. Tesla has also announced plans to produce lithium-ion batteries for older companies and industries including the aviation and maritime industries. In addition to producing lithium-ion batteries, Tesla also designs and manufactures electric vehicles, solar panels and solar roof tiles and energy storage systems. The company has a significant presence in the electric vehicle market and is known for its innovative products and technologies. I've heard a lot of noise about all the precious metals that go into these lithium-ion batteries. Can you tell me about what types of metals go into them? 1. Cobalt Cobalt is used as a cathode material in lithium-ion batteries. It is a hard silver gray metal that is found in a variety of minerals, including cobaltite, maltite, and orthrite. 2. Nickel Nickel is used as a cathode material in some types of lithium-ion batteries. It is a silvery white metal that is found in a variety of minerals, including pentandite and millerite. 3. Copper Copper is used as a current collector in lithium-ion batteries. It is a reddish-orange metal that is found in a variety of minerals, including chalcopyrite and bornite. 4. Aluminum Aluminum is used as a current collector in some types of lithium-ion batteries. It is a silver-white metal that is found in a variety of minerals, including bauxite and cryolite. 5. Gold Gold is used in small quantities as a conductor in lithium-ion batteries. Note that these metals are used in very small quantities in the production of lithium-ion batteries. Where do most of these precious metals get mined around the world? Where do they come from? Um, I've heard different, different countries all around the world. 1. Cobalt The Democratic Republic of Congo DRC is the largest producer of cobalt in the world, accounting for about two-thirds of global production. Other significant producers include Russia, Canada, and Australia. Two. Nickel The Philippines is the largest producer of nickel in the world, accounting for about 25% of global production. Other significant producers include Russia, Indonesia, and Canada. 3. 
Copper Chile is the largest producer of copper in the world, accounting for about a third of global production. Other significant producers include Peru, China, and the United States. Tell me about solid state batteries. I've heard a lot in the news about that, and I'm just not really sure what to make of that. Is that the next generation of batteries? Solid state batteries are a type of lithium ion battery that uses a solid electrolyte instead of a liquid electrolyte. This makes them potentially safer and more energy dense than traditional lithium ion batteries. They also have the potential to be cheaper to produce as they do not require the use of expensive materials such as cobalt. There are several challenges that need to be overcome before solid state batteries can be used in electric vehicles on a large scale. These include improving the energy density and durability of the batteries as well as reducing the cost of production. It is difficult to predict exactly when solid state batteries will be widely used in electric vehicles, but it is likely that they will begin to be used in some applications within the next decade. Well, Ivatar, I want to thank you very much for this uh, first installment of our discussion around batteries, the history of batteries, taking me through this is Volta and AC and DC and the differences between volts and amps and watts and bringing us up through lithium ion all the way to solid state technology. Um, in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more about solid state battery technology, some additional newer technologies that are being introduced into the marketplace or at least being tested, maybe not commercialized yet. And then also talk a little bit about charging of electric vehicles and how that works and what's the optimal way to charge an electric vehicle in terms of temperatures and how, what's the best way to care for your current electric vehicle car. So once again, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Out of Spec Dave, and we'll be sure to catch you on the next one with my new friend, Evitar. Mm -hmm.